Do I need to hear a crack for a manipulation to be successful? That is a question I get asked all the time by students and by patients. And there's a couple of interesting things about that. Um, so I thought I'd just do a little video and just clear things up. Okay, in its simplicity, okay, you do not need to hear an audible crack for the technique to be effective. You can elicit the neurophysiological mechanisms of manipulation, the temporary reduction in muscle tone, the temporary reduction in pain, and, and the temporary improvement in range of movement without hearing an audible cavitation, okay? The key thing, guys, is you test the patient, you treat the patient, and then you retest the patient. If there's been no tangible change in quality and quantity of movement or any of the other things you've been looking for, then you've got rationale to try again. If though, you do the technique, you retest, and there has been an improvement, the patient feels good, they move well, the tissues have responded how you expect, whether or whether you don't hear a good old crack, I take that as a win, tea and medals, happy days. But there is a downside. Now, a lot of students make the mistake of associating a positive treatment and a positive manipulation with an audible crack. Now, the problem there is it becomes a lot of ego. And if you don't hear the crack, then you feel like you've been ineffective in treatment. And that's just simply not the case. Guys, don't chase the crack, okay? Don't chase the sound of the manipulation. And another thing is about also education of the patient, because the patient may equate a positive therapeutic outcome to the sound of an audible cavitation. Now, this is where education of the patient is key, 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 key. You should be telling them anyway things like, you're not putting joints back in place, I'm not correcting your pelvis, I'm not changing your leg length. You need to make sure also they understand that the sound of the manipulation may or may not occur, and that does not mean the technique has been either effective or not effective, okay? You have to manage patient expectation, because ultimately, if they're expecting a crack, and you put them on the table, you do a technique, and there isn't one, but there has been a tissue change, there has been a range of movement improvement, they're not going to equate that, okay, to a positive outcome. So. Don't chase the sound of the manipulation. You can elicit the neurophysiological mechanisms without hearing the audible click and make sure the patient knows that they don't always have to hear the crack during treatment. I say to them, listen, I'm gonna do a manipulative technique on this area, okay? You may or may not hear an audible cavitation or you may or may not hear a click or a cracking sound. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna look at it, we're gonna treat it, and then we're gonna relook at it. And what's going to really be my gauge is looking for the quality and quantity of movement. And remember guys, this is temporary. This is a window of opportunity for you to get them into the gym, boom, get strong.